This is definitely one of my favorite sweets to make during the fall time. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make the cinnamon apple cake. You're going to start off by adding a cup and a half of flour to a bowl, as well as two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and three fourths cups of sugar. Set your dry ingredients to the side, now we're going to start on our wet ingredients. Add two eggs, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, a half a cup of vegetable oil, as well as a half a cup of plain Greek yogurt. Chop up one apple into small cubes, and now we're going to go ahead and sift in our dry ingredients. Add in your apples and fold everything together. Your batter should be a little thicker than regular cake batter usually is. But here I'm grabbing an 8-inch cake pan. I'm going to bake my cake at 360 for 35 minutes. While our cake is baking, go ahead and sift in a half a cup of powdered sugar into a bowl, a heaping tablespoon of cinnamon, and heavy cream until you reach this consistency. Take your cake out of the oven and we're going to poke some holes. And we're going to pour our glaze all over the cake. I've gotten so many requests to do a video on how I season my fries and my chicken and waffles video, so this is how I did it. You're going to start off by peeling, cleaning, and cutting your potatoes. You're going to fry them on medium heat until they're nice and golden, like so. I added them to a bowl and seasoned them with garlic salt, a little bit of black pepper, as well as dried cilantro. And that's literally it, guys. This is probably the easiest recipe I've posted on my TikTok, but there you go. Today we're making strawberry cheesecake french toast roll-ups. We're going to start off by grabbing a bowl, add a half a pack of room temperature cream cheese, one fourth cup of powdered sugar, a pinch of salt and mix that up. Set that to the side, now we're gonna grab some strawberries. We're gonna chop them up pretty small, and now in a separate bowl we're gonna crack one egg, add about a half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of vanilla extract and mix. I'm gonna grab a piece of bread and we're gonna roll it out very thin. Here I'm just cutting off the crust. Fill it up with your cream cheese and your strawberries. We're going to roll it up and dip it into our egg mixture like I'm doing here. Cook them in a pan on medium heat and we want them to develop some color. To finish, we're going to roll them in some cinnamon sugar, drizzle them in syrup, and we're done. Today we're making some stuffed pizza logs. This is really simple and fun to make, especially if you have kids around. So if you'd like to know how I made them, just keep watching. I started off with dough that I made in my last video. I rolled it out and I ended up cutting it in half because it was a little too big. I grabbed my cheese stick and used that as my little template to see where I should cut. Removed the cheese stick, added my sauce, added the cheese stick back again. I added spinach and bell peppers, you could add whatever you'd like. Tuck in the ends and then roll it up. Here I'm just cutting off the excess dough and then reusing it to make another log. I brushed it with some egg wash and topped it with sesame seeds. Baked at 400 for 10 to 12 minutes and you're done. With the leftover dough, my nieces and nephew wanted to make some pizza. And it was so cute because they shaped them into hearts. It's so, it's so yummy. yummy. Today we're making some stuffed pizza logs. This is really simple and fun to make, especially if you have kids around. So if you'd like to know how I made them, just keep watching. I started off with dough that I made in my last video. I rolled it out and I ended up cutting it in half because it was a little too big. I grabbed my cheese stick and used that as my little template to see where I should cut. Removed the cheese stick, added my sauce, added the cheese stick back again. I added spinach and bell peppers, you could add whatever you'd like. Tuck in the ends and then roll it up. Here I'm just cutting off the excess dough and then reusing it to make another log. I brushed it with some egg wash and topped it with sesame seeds. Baked at 400 for 10 to 12 minutes, and you're done. With the leftover dough, my nieces and nephew wanted to make some pizza. And it was so cute because they shaped them into hearts. It's so, so yummy. yummy. Today we're making these buttery garlic herb knots. You want to begin with 2 cups of warm water, 2 tablespoons active dry yeast, 4 tablespoons of sugar, 3 tablespoons of powdered milk, and 2 cups of all-purpose flour. Cover with a clean towel and let it rest for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, add in 3 more cups of all-purpose flour half a cup olive oil, two teaspoons salt, and a tablespoon of thyme and sesame seeds. Knead your dough for 10 minutes, then add it to a floured surface. Pat it down gently, then cut into strips, and then cut those strips in half. You want to roll them out and tie them very gently. The less you play with them, the better they'll come out. Add them to a prepared baking dish and brush on some egg wash. Bake at 350 for about 20 minutes or until golden. Brush on your garlic butter, and you're done. Today we're making strawberry cheesecake french toast roll-ups. We're going to start off by grabbing a bowl. Add a half a pack of room temperature cream cheese, one fourth cup of powdered sugar, a pinch of salt and mix that up. Set that to the side, now we're going to grab some strawberries. We're going to chop them up pretty small, and now in a separate bowl we're going to crack one egg. Add about a half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of vanilla extract and mix. I'm going to grab a piece of bread and we're going to roll it out very thin. Here I'm just cutting off the crust. Fill it up with your cream cheese and your strawberries. We're going to roll it up and dip it into our egg mixture like I'm doing here. Cook them in a pan on medium heat and we want them to develop some color. To finish, we're going to roll them in some cinnamon sugar, drizzle them in syrup, and we're done.
Today we're making caramel stuffed chocolate snickerdoodles. You want to begin with one cup of packed brown sugar, a half a cup of sugar and one stick of unsalted butter chopped. You want to beat your butter and sugar together for about three minutes. Then you want to add in two eggs, one at a time, two and three fourths cups of all-purpose flour, one fourth cup of cocoa powder, three four teaspoon of salt and baking soda, one tablespoon of cornstarch and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Stuff with soft caramel candies and roll in cinnamon sugar. And we're going to bake at 350 for 18 minutes. Today we're baking up the perfect fall cookie and they are pumpkin pie snickerdoodles. Start by adding a cup and a half of flour to a bowl, one teaspoon pumpkin pie seasoning, one half teaspoon cinnamon, half a teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of cream of tartare, and one fourth teaspoon of salt and set that to the side. Now in a separate bowl you're gonna add one stick of room temperature butter, a half a cup of white sugar, one fourth cup of brown sugar, and mix for about two minutes. After two minutes add one egg yolk, one fourth cup of pumpkin puree, one tablespoon of vanilla extract and mix. Now go ahead and sift in your dry ingredients. Now fold everything together. Once everything's nice and incorporated, go ahead and cover it with saran wrap and set it in the fridge for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, roll up your dough, roll them in cinnamon sugar, and you're going to bake them at 350 for 13 minutes, and you're done. Today we're making cinnamon sugar bagel bites. You want to begin by mixing together your yeast mixture, 2 and 1 fourth cups of warm water, 3 tablespoons of brown sugar, and a tablespoon and a half of active dry yeast. Mix and set that to the side for 10 minutes. Here I'm adding 5 cups of all-purpose flour and a tablespoon of salt. After 10 minutes, add your yeast mixture in last, then knead your dough for 10 minutes. Add your dough to a floured surface and create about 20 to 25 dough balls. You want to let them rest for 10 minutes, and while they're resting, you can go ahead and roll up your cream cheese. Then go ahead and stuff your bread with your cream cheese. Make sure to pinch them close tightly because you don't want them to open up when we boil them. Let them rest for another 30 minutes, then boil them in a pot of water and a quarter cup of brown sugar. You want to boil them for about 30 seconds on each side. Add to a prepared baking dish, brush with egg wash, and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes. Brush out of the oven, brush them with some butter, and then coat them in some cinnamon sugar, and you're done. Today we're making homemade pita bread. There will also be a recipe of tomorrow showing what I stuffed them with, so stay tuned for that. But to begin, you need one cup of warm water. 1 tablespoon of active dry yeast, 1 tablespoon of sugar, mix and set aside. Here I'm sifting 4 cups of all-purpose flour. Adding 2 tablespoons of sugar, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, 1 teaspoon of salt, as well as 2 teaspoons of vinegar. After letting your yeast mixture sit for 10 minutes, go ahead and add it in last. While your dough is in your mixer, add 1 third cup of warm water as well. If you feel like your dough is still stiff, add a tablespoon of water until it's nice and smooth. You want to knead your dough for 15 minutes, add to an oiled bowl, cover, and let it rest for 2 hours. After two hours, add your dough to a lightly floured surface and create 14 dough balls. You want to let those rest for another 20 minutes. Roll them out pretty thin, then let them rest for another 20 minutes. Preheat your oven to 550. Toss in your bread and you want to keep your eye on them, they cook very fast. It takes about 3-5 to five minutes, and once they develop a nice color and they puff up nicely, you're done. This is definitely one of my favorite sweets to make during the fall time. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make the cinnamon apple cake. You're going to start off by adding a cup and a half of flour to a bowl, as well as two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and three fourths cups of sugar. Set your dry ingredients to the side. Now we're going to start on our wet ingredients. Add two eggs, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, a half a cup of vegetable oil, as well as a half a cup of plain Greek yogurt. Chop up one apple into small cubes. And now we're going to go ahead and sift in our dry ingredients. Add in your apples and fold everything together. Your batter should be a little thicker than regular cake batter usually is. But here I'm grabbing an 8 inch cake pan. I'm going to bake my cake at 360 for 35 minutes. While our cake is baking, go ahead and sift in a half a cup of powdered sugar into a bowl, a heaping tablespoon of cinnamon, and heavy cream until you reach this consistency. Take your cake out of the oven and we're going to poke some holes. And we're going to pour our glaze all over the cake. Today we're going to be making homemade monkey bread. If you've never had monkey bread before, it's extremely addicting but also really easy to make, so let's get right into it. We're going to start by preparing our dough. Here I'm adding 2 cups of flour, 2 tablespoons of yeast, 4 tablespoons of sugar, 2 cups of warm water, as well as 3 tablespoons of dry milk and 1 third cup of vegetable oil. You're going to mix everything together, cover with a towel, and we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you want to add in 3 more cups of flour, as well as 1 teaspoon of salt. We're going to knead our dough for 10 minutes with a dough hook. You can also knead your dough by hand if you'd like. Add your dough to a floured surface, pat it down gently, and we're going to cut it into bite-sized pieces. Now that we're done with that, we're going to mix up some cinnamon sugar. Also in a separate bowl, and a half a cup of melted butter. Added it to the bottom of my cake pan, coated my dough into my cinnamon sugar, and plopped them in. Once your cake tin is full, you're going to bake at 350 for 50 minutes. Flip over your monkey bread, and I like to dust mine with some powdered sugar. And you're done. It's that easy, and you're ready to enjoy.